Good Monday morning. It's Monday morning. It's Marketplace Monday. Uh, this is Pastor Nick here with you, man. I am so excited about today. It's another great week. We're starting out, and we always start out uh, Mondays on Winning in the Word, talking about the marketplace, whether we have a business, uh, whether we work somewhere, uh, whether we're a, a leader in the marketplace. Uh, the purpose of Marketplace Mondays is to get insight and get wisdom from God on why we're called to the marketplace. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize the marketplace is where the next great revival is going to take place. Uh, it's not going to take place in the church. A lot of people think it's going to take place in the church, but it's not. It's going to take place in the marketplace. Why? That's where the word of God is needed. The word of God is needed in the marketplace. So you as being a marketplace leader, it's very vital. It's very vital that you understand your role in the marketplace, not just your role in church. Amen. So I'm excited about the word today. Let me give some shout outs and we'll get started. Uh, good morning, Terry, to you from Pensacola. Uh, I hope it's as cold in Pensacola as it is here in Florida. It's beautiful. Harry, good morning to you. Faye, good morning to you. Mark, good morning to you and your lovely wife. Jerry, 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 good morning to you. Lakeisha, good morning to you. Jennifer, good morning to you, young lady. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, good morning to you. Cynthia, good morning to you. Uh, Yalitza, good morning to you. Exclusive Luxury Lace, good morning to you. Uh, Miss Ashley, good morning to you. Brenda Ferrandes, good morning to you. Miss Veronica, good morning to you, young lady. Brenda Jackson, good morning to you. Uh, Shanika, good morning to you. Uh, Positive Love Energy, good morning to you. Uh, Brother Tony, good morning to you. Rodriguez, hallelujah. Uh, Annie, good morning to you, young lady. God bless you. Great to see you yesterday. Uh, to the Emersons, good morning to you guys. God bless you. Uh, and to Ms. Uh, Johnson, good morning to you. God bless you. Uh, thank you guys all for joining this morning, man. I'm so excited uh, to have you all here today. I'm thankful to God uh, that you made another great decision uh, to start your week out, to start your day out. Uh, winning in the word. That's what it's all about. Getting God's word. Um, on things, getting God's understanding about things. So let's pray and get right in the word today. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Lord, for each person uh, that's joining today. I thank you, Father, for their participation. I thank you, Lord, for their, their wanting to start their day off by hearing a word from you, by hearing uh, from God relative to their situation relative to their circumstances, relative to, to what they're going through, or Father, relative to their vision of where you're taking them to. Lord, I just thank you for their obedience, for their faithfulness, and for their dedication uh, to want to see their lives evolve, to want to see their lives mature, and lastly, to want to see their lives transform into all you've called them to be. I thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yelitsa, good morning to you. As well, I don't know if I called out your name. I, I think I might have missed you. Sorry if I did. Candace, uh, good morning to you. Natasha, good morning to you. Amen. Time to get started. Listen, today I want to talk about being in the marketplace. And, and what I want to share today is, you know, as being, as being um, people of God, men and women of God in the marketplace, God has called us to be leaders. God has called us to be leaders. Uh, and the way that we lead in the marketplace and the number one thing that we have to focus on when it comes to the marketplace is we lead in the marketplace through the unction of the Holy Spirit. We don't lead in the marketplace based on what we want to do, based on how we want to do it or how we feel about it. Have you all ever hear people say that a lot? Well, this is how I feel about a thing or this is how I see a thing. You know, it doesn't really matter. We got to get out of our feelings and we got to get into the Holy Spirit. Because one thing about it is when the Holy Spirit says something to us, it is our job to check what we believe we're hearing from the Holy Spirit with the word. Does what the Holy Spirit, we believe the Holy Spirit just said to us, doesn't line up with the word of God. Doesn't line up with the word of God. And one way for you, and I, I teach this a lot in church, and I encourage everybody on here, if you've never heard me say this, or have never heard this, I encourage you to begin to um, practice this. Uh, and it's called practicing the presence of God. 
practicing the presence of God. Sometimes you'll be in a conversation at home or something will be going on or, or, or you'll be doing something and something will say something to you. Have you, have, have you ever had that happen? Something just says something to you and you actually say what that something said. You know, a lot of times people call it intuition. Sometimes people call it their third voice, different things. But what it really is, if you're born again, it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And the way that you tune your ear to hear the Holy Spirit is when he speaks to you, because he speaks to you in your heart. The Holy Spirit will speak to you in the subconscious. He don't speak to you in an audible voice. But when he speaks to you, what you do is you acknowledge out of your mouth, yeah, Holy Spirit, I'll say that. You acknowledge what you heard from the Holy Spirit, literally, or you write it down. And then search it out and see what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. I call that practicing the presence of God. And the reason why we do that is that, that exercise will tune your ear to know when you're hearing from the Holy Spirit. It'll tune your ear. And the reason why that is vitally important is because as believers in the marketplace, we've been called to be leaders. And the way that we lead in the marketplace is through engaging the Holy Spirit. Whether it's at work, whether it's through people, whether it's in business, whether it's in markets, we've been called to engage the Holy Spirit. And that engaging the Holy Spirit and learning how to know it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you will create a better household at your home. It'll be create a better office where you work, whether it's your business or you work for somebody or you're a manager, it will help you in that environment. And ultimately, it'll help you to lead your city to make a difference and ultimately to lead a nation. Amen. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 29 and verse 2, Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 2, the Bible says this, when the uncompromisingly righteous, the uncomp it's in the Amplified, when the uncomparably righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And But when the wicked man rules, the people groan and sigh. When the uncomparably righteous are in authority, when we rule, People are happy. So you have to understand, you have to get a revelation. God has created us to rule in the marketplace. God has created you wherever you're at at your job to be a leader. God has created you wherever you're at in your business to, to lead. If God called you to, to be in the barbecue business, you should have the number one barbecue place in your city. If God called you to be a handyman, you should be the number one handyman company in your city. If God called you to be an architect, your architecture business should be the number one in the city. If God called you to be a, a, a team leader at Walmart, you should be the best team leader that Walmart knows. If God called you to be a bag boy at Publix, you should be the best bag boy Publix knows. Wherever it is that you've been called to, and whatever it is that you're doing, God has called you to be the very best. And it's us hearing from God and us hearing from the Holy Spirit that will make us the best. A lot of people go to work and they just do, they believe any old kind of way should do. I see this in the church. People don't even practice anymore wanting to have things in excellence. We just, it, oh, as just church, don't worry about it. Oh, th don't worry about it. What do you think, if we're doing that in the church and the church is the training ground, right? What do you think is going to happen at work? How do you think you're going to react at work? It's going to be just any old, well, you know, they're not paying me enough pastor to do it that way, then quit. Go get another job. If the job you're working at is not paying you enough to do it in excellence and you don't feel they're paying you what, you, what you're worth, you need to move on. Don't stay there and take their money. Why? Because you end up hurting the kingdom. Because those people know what you're all about. And they see how you react to things. They're watching you. When we're marketplace leaders and when we're operating in the marketplace, people are watching us. 
And the thing that you got to understand is stop trying to impress people. Do what God says. Honor God in the marketplace. Honor God on your job. Honor God in your relationships. Honor God when you're out there in the world. And God will exalt you. God will promote you. And God will increase you. You don't need them to do it. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 75, verse 6 and 7 in the Amplified. It says this, Psalms chapter 75, verse 6 and 7. It says, from not, watch this, for not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, comes promotion and uplifting. So he's saying promotion doesn't come from the north, promotion doesn't come from the south, promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. Promotion doesn't come from man, promotion doesn't come from kissing up. But in verse 7, it says, but God is the judge. He puts one down and lifts another up. So you need to get a revelation that it is God that's going to lift you up. It is God that's going to promote you. Stop. Don't get agitated, aggravated at the people at your job. It's your job to be there and be led by the Holy Spirit. You know, if you own a business, don't get aggravated with your employees. Love them, honor them, treat them how you want to be treated. I know it's hard, man. It's hard for me. I go through it every time, every day. I understand because you see things the way you want them, and sometimes they're not doing it that way. But it's our job to just continue to try to encourage them, try to correct them, try to counsel them. And remember what the word says. If you're an employer and you're a leader, you can you have liabilities and you have assets. You can only carry a liability so long. You got to realize it needs to be our goal wherever we're at in the marketplace, whether we're a leader, whether we're a business owner, whether we're a manager, or whether we're working somewhere. It is our job to change the spiritual landscape of the whole organization into the favor of God. In other words, us being there, us being focused on God needs to allow that. That company is going to have favor because you're there. That company is going to prosper because you're there. But the company can't prosper and the company can't have favor if you're there acting like the world. If you get your butt on the sh on your shoulders every time somebody says something wrong to you, Pastor, they're they're not respecting me, and Pastor, they're not treating me right, and Pastor, they're they're not honoring my gift. They don't have to honor nothing. Let God honor it. Let their let God honor it. Your purpose and your calling at your job, in your business, wherever you're at in the marketplace, is to be transformational. You've been called there to transform whatever that situation is, whatever that job is, whatever that position is. If you're a bad boy, you're there so that when you get done, people, man, they're going to be, man, this guy's the best bad boy we've ever, ever seen. And the other bad boys or bad girls want to become just as good as you because you're leading them. You know, my pastor used to say it this way. If your business, if your job or your church had 50 more of you in it, would it be better off or worse off? Ask yourself that question. If your business, if you own a business in the city had 50 more of your businesses in the city, would it be a better city or a worse city? You go to the restaurant. I want a pork sandwich. We're out of pork. What, what, what is that? You go to the restaurant. You know, I, I want spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, we didn't make that today. You go to the hardware store to pick up a part. You drove two hours to get there to get the part. We don't have that part in stock. That's not excellence. Somebody comes somewhere to spend the, you know, you're sitting at a restaurant, you're spending your hard-earned money, and the waitress has her, her, her butt on her shoulder. She had a, she's having a bad day. That doesn't make you feel good. You're there spending your money. We don't want to be one of those people. 
Every day you get to work, you're complaining. I was telling the church yesterday, I, I was at church and, you know, I was telling the church that every Sunday when I come into service, uh, Brother Leroy gets my stuff and, you know, he tends to whatever, you know, whatever I need, he's there for me. You know, and he'll always walk in my office, you know, while I'm studying, getting ready. And I always make a point to ask him, how you doing today? Anybody know why I ask him how, how he's doing today? Because I ask him how he's doing today because I'm not shooting dice every time I ask him. Meaning I don't know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get the same thing. I'm going to get a big smile. I'm doing great, Pastor, man. How you doing? I'm ready for the word. Ready to hear from God. Now, do you think that every Sunday that he's at church, do you think that he's ready to hear from God? Do you think that he's excited? Do you, you, you don't think that maybe one Sunday on the way to the work, Miss Alton got under his skin or maybe somebody in a red light aggravated him or maybe he went to the store and somebody cussed him out. And maybe, do you ever think maybe he's having a bad day? Of course he can. But you know what he chooses to do? He chooses to say, you know what? I'm here to hear from God. And it's going to be a great day. And he's always there. And I guarantee you that if you if I go to any of his employers, all of his employers will tell you, Brother Roy's a great guy to work with. Maybe he didn't do the job right. Maybe he, he didn't, wasn't the best at something. But his attitude was always a good one. I want to leave you with that today. In the marketplace, your attitude is going to determine 75% of your, your altitude that you climb. Because I don't care how good you do a job, people don't want to be around limits. People don't want to be around people that always have problems and always have issues. Before you get to work today, get yourself together. Get your spirit together. Walk in there. Know that you're being led by the Spirit of God. Know that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. Know that the greater one is in you. Know that you've been called there today with a purpose. You've been called there today for somebody that's downtrodden, somebody that's hurt, somebody that's afflicted, somebody that's going through to see you and to see your light so shine that they can go to you and they know that you'll have a word from God to encourage them. Amen. That's what we're called to do in the marketplace. We're called to change the marketplace, not allow the marketplace to change us. I love you. Thank you for joining on Marketplace Monday. Tomorrow is Together in Marriage Tuesday. I want every one of you to invite a friend. Man, we got a great word. Pastor Fran has something she wants to share tomorrow on Together in Marriage Tuesday. It's going to be phenomenal. Let your friends know. Let your neighbors know. Tell somebody. Get on just 15 minutes. Until tomorrow, it's Pastor Nick saying, enjoy life. Mm -hmm.